everybody, it's Michael Kinnett with Eternal Networks again. This is our second weekly uh, live broadcast on Friday. So we're doing this the next uh, the next several Fridays at 1 p.m. We're gonna be talking about the, the Russia-Ukraine conflict and your cyber safety. Uh, so each of these live broadcasts, I'm gonna be talking about, kind of breaking it down into three sections, right? I'm gonna talk about a little bit about what's going on in the news with cyber, um, cyber stuff over with Russia and Ukraine and Europe and, and those things. Then we're going to, to talk a little bit about um, a tip, right? Some sort of a tip on how you can be more safe with your cybersecurity. Uh, and then the last part, we're gonna take questions. So any questions you have um, about what's going on, about what you can do to be protected, um, maybe, maybe just questions about security in general, right? Any question you've got, whether it seems related or not, love to take those and answer those at the end. So, getting right into the news, uh, I'm sure I'm sure you guys are probably seeing on uh, whether it's CNN or Fox or NBC, whatever news agency you follow. Uh, I'm sure you're hearing lots of different stories about what's going on over there in uh, in Ukraine and in Europe in general. And there's a kind of a few things just that happened the last few days that I wanted to to point out. So, uh, you know, there's, you may have heard about this, maybe not, the Biosat satellite internet was disrupted through a lot of Europe. Um, and that was attributed to some, some booby trap firmware that was loaded on those satellites. So a uh, hacking attempt uh, to take down some of the communications infrastructure within Europe. Um, a lot of cyber uh, security professionals uh, are, have pointed out that most of what Russia seems to be doing is, you know, limiting communications and really distributing misinformation, right? So Ukraine has asked for, for help in various fronts on the amount of, of misinformation that Russia is, you know, they're hacking websites, they're loading up fake news stories that indicate that maybe Ukraine has, has given up um, when that's not the case. So there's definitely a lot of misinformation and those type of attacks are going on. Um, Belarus was attacked on March 8th um, and on their rail system and on their telecommunication system to once again to help to try to disrupt their communication infrastructure. Um, there's still reports of what I talked about last week about these wiper, you know, these malware attacks that are actually wiping data on various systems throughout Ukraine and Eastern Europe. Um, also earlier today was some reports that um, some of the data centers that have been housed in Ukraine have been relocated. The, the data, the information, the systems have been moved out of Ukraine um, for safety. And there's been multiple attacks against one of Ukraine's uh, primary internet providers, Triolian. Triolan, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and there's also been some additional hacking attempts announced today uh, and jamming of some Finnish GPS systems. Um, so that's, that's the news. I mean, that's kind of some of what we're seeing. Um, there's a, an interesting article on The Guardian where some, some cyber professionals are talking about, uh, you know, there, there has not really been some major catastrophic cyber attack, right? There's, there's definitely a lot of stuff going on, but it's not, you know, it's not as bad as it, it could be. And, and many professionals believe that, that what's going on is, uh, you know, these nations are, are limiting what they're doing because you know, they know once once they cross that boundary, it's it, it, it could lead to cyber World War Three. So, uh, you know, it could get worse. Hopefully, the leaders of the nations, you know, keep level heads and and this isn't this isn't too bad. But there's there's always a risk of some spillover. So today, you know, we want to talk today. What what tip I'm going to give you today to help you improve your cyber security, your cyber resilience is is on backups. So it no matter what level of security you have, there's always the risk that there's something new, that there's some new attack, you know, that maybe a website that you know and trust that you go to to check news or check whatever has been hacked. And, you know, you click a link that seems legitimate and now there's an infection on your system. So there's always that risk. And so no matter, no matter how much security you have in place, it's always critical to have a backup, not only for, you know, ransomware and other cybersecurity risks, but also for, you know, accidents happen, right? Systems fail, uh, users maybe delete files accidentally, make changes, you know, it's it's always just good business practice to have a backup that you can restore to if needed. So my tip for backup, right? This, is, this isn't new from me. This is 
information that's out there, you know, we, we recommend and we follow the, the guidelines of the 3-2-1 rule. So you should have three copies of your data in at least two locations, one of which is off-site or offline. Now, the reason we say off-site or offline is, is a critical one because the modern ransomware attacks, if, if they get into your system, they're gonna encrypt your system and anything that they can get their fingers on, right? So if your backup is plugged into that system, your backup's also encrypted uh, and you're not gonna be able to, to restore from it without potentially paying the ransom. Uh, so having a, having a backup that is offsite, offline, that is inaccessible if there's a breach within your network or on your system is critical. Um, we, we highly recommend, in fact, next week we're having a webinar, we're gonna talk about backup systems for specifically for business. Um, we recommend Datto and they follow this 321 rule. So there's a local appliance, backs up locally to that, encrypts it, sends it offsite to multiple data centers. And so we'll, we'll talk in greater detail about what that, what that service looks like, why it's important to have something similar, whether you use Datto, whether you use StorageCraft, whether you use Veeam, regardless of what technology you're using for backup, it's critical that you have something in place and we'll be talking about kind of best practices around that, how how backups, how proper backup systems can help improve your ransomware protection and other other risks mitigation as well. So, uh, like I said, next week we're going to talk in greater detail about that. The topic it's it's on St. Patrick's Day. It's next Thursday, 1 p.m. So of course we had to to work that in. And the topic is don't depend on the luck of the Irish. Protect your cloud data, right? So we're we're going to dig deep into some of those those systems and solutions and and strategies and, and backing up your data. So it's at one o'clock next Thursday. We'll put a registration link in the in the comments below. Um, and now now we're at the question part, Q and A. So let's see. Let me pull up my uh, comments section here. See if anybody is posting anything. I do have a couple that uh, people have asked me previous to going live here. So. Um, this, this was a question, uh, what sort of businesses do you think might be affected by the conflict here in the US? Uh, that's a tricky one because the, the way hackers um, operate, you know, sometimes they target individual companies and organizations, right? So nation states typically will target, you know, infrastructure or something, a, a specific target that they're going after. Um, you know, when, when you've got hacking going back and forth between nations and between criminal organizations and different things a lot of times they don't they don't necessarily know who they're targeting right they're not they're not coming after you individually personally they don't know who you are or who your business is all they know is that when they scanned the internet they found that your system has the vulnerability right and that they can exploit that vulnerability and gain access and so that's what they do they gain access um, once they're in then they try to figure out who you are you know, what kind of data you have, um, how valuable is that data on the dark web, right? Every, every piece of information on the dark web has a dollar of value to it, right? Social security numbers, credit card numbers, bank account numbers, you know, phone numbers, all of that, passwords, all that has a dollar value to them, right? So they can, once they get in, they figure out, well, what's this, what's this account worth? What's this system worth? And then sometimes they steal the data, sometimes they just encrypt it and charge ransom. Um, so. That being said, you know, there's a lot of businesses in the U.S. that probably aren't necessarily going to be targets, but that doesn't mean they're not going to be found in the process of these these hackers and these criminals um, and, and nation states, right, going and scanning and trying to gain access and disrupt whatever they can. So having proper security in place is critical for that. And we'll next week, we'll, we'll give some more tips. We'll talk more about some other solutions on there. I'm always open for questions anytime. Let's see here, next question somebody previously asked me here, what's the first thing my company should do to set up a defense? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think it was last month we talked about uh, doing um, doing a, 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 a cyber assessment of your business. I would suggest starting starting there. Um, you know, having, having an organization such as Eternal Networks uh, some sort of an IT professional with a background in cybersecurity of taking a look at your systems and seeing what you have in place. There's some, there may be some very simple, very easy steps to increase your cybersecurity. 
Um, there's some excellent tools out there. We're going to be launching um, some new tools here shortly for ongoing vulnerability scanning and management, including scorecard mechanisms, right? To be able to see where do I rank from an A to an F in cybersecurity and what are the quickest and easiest steps that I can take to move up from an F to a D to a C minus to a B, you know, and work on improving that. Uh, that being said, you know, if you don't have a business class firewall, if you just went to Best Buy or Walmart and bought a little wireless router for your business, I would start there. That is not going to offer the protection that your business needs from intrusion prevention and intrusion detection. So that, that would be one of the first things I would, I would suggest, um, along with having a, uh, an actual cyber assessment performed. Let's see, are there any other questions? I don't see any other questions on here. Let's see it. I think that's it. So I think we'll go ahead and wrap up. Uh, it's a beautiful Friday. Hopefully you guys all have going to have a wonderful weekend. Uh, my kids, it's spring break starts uh, today. They get two weeks off of school. So we're going to be uh, doing some fun things with the kids in the, in the next week or so. But uh, hopefully you guys are having a wonderful time. Uh, please join me next week. Next Friday, we're going to be talking about some, some other cyber, cyber tips and some of the other information from the news about this Russia and Ukraine conflict. And also we have the webinar next Thursday at 1 p.m. Hopefully I can see you guys on there. Thanks, have a wonderful, wonderful day and a wonderful weekend.